everyone. Marcus here from the Ashland Fly Shop and today we're going to be tying a new kind of winter steelhead fly that I've just been thinking about for the last couple weeks um, and we're going to be using some of these new materials that we brought into the shop in the last um, couple weeks here. Um, so let's get started. We're going to be tying this one on the blue um, Senyo's 40 millimeter shank and we'll just start our thread consistently at the top of the fly and work our way towards the back. Cut that off and then I'm going to tie in my trailing hook system which is a number two owner hook with 30 pound fire line attached to it. Just leave as much room. I think this fly, when it's all said and done, is just going to be maybe a half inch past that, that hook back there. And try and keep that fire line on the top of the fly as best I can. And kind of lock it down a little more as you go up the shank. And the nice thing about these shanks is the nice big wide open eye for any type of trailing material like this that you actually want to bring through the fly. It just makes it that much more durable. And then you have all this open room through the eye so you're not blocking anything up there. And as you wrap back, just make sure to tighten down every couple turns and then it'll be, it'll be locked in there. And then I'm going to tie in the eye that we're using for this fly, which on this one is going to be the Aquafly's intruder eye. And this is the brighter blue color that they sell. They also have a dark blue color that I like. This is the Kingfisher in a 3 16 um, which is a good good amount of weight. Um, we're not going to add any other weight to this fly and try to as much as we can reduce bulk but it will have rabbit strip um, which anything with rabbit strip and a 3 16 brass eye on it um, is going to weigh you down a little bit casting. Just figure eight those eyes until they're a little bit locked down and then work our thread back. And this fly is just going to have a single station a lot like what I've done in the past. Um, and off the back of the fly I'm going to be using Flashaboo, um, barred grizzly Flashaboo which we've got in now in a couple different colors. Um, and to me, it's probably the best looking flash that we've ever carried here. Um, it's just a really cool accent on a lot of these flies. So I'm going to pull off in between five and ten strands, cut them really short up near the top there. And then lay them back so that they hang just past the hook. Um, and that'll help determine kind of the overall length of the fly. Keep them nice and straight on top of everything there. And I think instead of doubling it back, I'm just going to leave that amount of flash, maybe a couple more strands. But the one, you'll see why I don't double them back as much because I'm going to use that flash to wrap the body. So I'm just going to tie a few more in there. I'm going to pull those out just a little bit. And then I'm going to tie what's going to be the rib of the body which is medium ultra wire and silver seems to be by far the most common rib that I use on my flies. 
just pull out a little bit of it. You can kind of tie it in right in this same section that you've worked your thread against. And then bring all the flashaboo back, tie that back, and then work the tag end of your of your rib throughout the body. And then I'm just gonna work this barred flashaboo up consistently throughout the body. And it's cool that barring kinda as you wrap it, it gives this striped look throughout the body, which is really cool looking. And then tie it off. And then I'll just bring my wire over in nice even wraps just to lock that down so that makes it a lot more durable. Any, any flash like that throughout the body um, without a wire over it, really the first fish you hook, it's going to most likely just grab that and rip it all out. Um, and you'll just kind of end up with this jumbled looking fly. And then for the prop on this, I'm going to use um, Fairflies, their 5D brush. And this is the Micro Spay Steely Blue. And it's the smallest brush that they make um, in terms of length. And to me, that makes it the most versatile um, of all theirs because you can use it on kind of smaller profile flies. Um, but it really, even just with one one wrap around the shank, it really lays down nice and even. Um, and it builds a great little station. And as you're laying it down, make sure those rubber legs um, are going back along the fly. And you can, you know, you could keep going as much as you want. The main thing to avoid with these brushes, I think, is just not getting too much bulk. Um, so that was about a wrap and a half, and it looked like if I kept going, it was just going to get really big. So I'll bring that down where I tied it off and, and wrap on top of it just to secure everything. And it kind of creates a nice even platform to start my fly. So if I would have, you know, just done my standard station up here with dubbing and Arctic Fox, they usually end up looking, you know, just about like that. So that brush is a really simple way to achieve the same thing without adding just a crazy amount of bulk, which is why they're really nice. On top of this front station, um, I'm going to lay down a rabbit strip. Um, and we did a darker one earlier. Um, but this one, I'm going to lighten up a little bit, I think, and tie in a fluorescent blue rabbit strip. So you cut off the rabbit strip in the length you're looking for. Um, you can kind of peel off the top so it lays in there easier. And just seeing how that blue is going to look on there. I think that blue with this color eye is going to make a pretty cool looking fly. But before I tie in the rabbit, um, I'm going to use two different tones of ice wing fiber, um, kind of their lighter blue and the more traditional steely blue. And I'm going to lay those in um, one color on each side. And the reason that I'm going to do it under the rabbit is I really want that, that fluorescent blue from the rabbit to be the thing that the fish is is seeing most of. I tend to like flash to just be an accent um, as opposed to something that's really kind of controlling the look of the fly. So I'm just going to tie in these little 
hints of flash and you can cut them however long you like them. I tend to like them, you know, varying lengths towards, um, towards the back of the hook um, or sometimes I'll make them come all the way back to the flashaboo at the very end here. So that's the light blue and here's the darker blue um, which I think I will tie in a little bit longer. that one off and tie in and as I pull it out of the bag I kind of twist it in my hands and that just keeps those braids um, together a little bit and you can pull it out make it as thin as you want um, or as thick as you want And then I'll tie in the rabbit on top of that flash. One soft wrap up there. And then just start to tie that chunk down a little bit. And then just to spice it up a little bit more, I'm going to add, just for contrast and a little extra color, um, this is MFC's Ostrich in purple. And I'm going to add a couple strands on the flank of each side. I can turn the vise. And this is a standard hairline rabbit strip on here. If you tie a fly with that much rabbit, it's probably going to soak up quite a bit of water. So one, one thing you can do if you tie a fly like this um, and it's just too heavy for you um, or just not very fun to cast, you can always use a micro rabbit strip, um, which is cut the diameter of it is a little bit less. Um, so they will be easier to pick up out of the water than, than these big ones. And then I'm going to work in my collar here. So we're going to use silver pheasant crest for the collar on this fly. Um, and collars, you just want them to be proportional to the size of the fly and then to the amount of space that you've left at the, at the head of the fly. Um, that is a huge feather right there. I'm tempted to use that one. This one's a little too enormous. But the second biggest one in the bunch um, is gonna be perfect for this fly because it's just gonna help absorb some of that room at the head of the fly. come to the very tip, kind of peel everything back and tie it in. And then grab the stem, pull everything so it's laying kind of nice and flat and then just start to wrap forward here. Make sure as it's laying down that it's laying down in the direction that you're that you're looking for on your fly. I'm just gonna lighten that one up right there. And after it's all laid down, you can kind of still manipulate those feathers a little bit. And that one, I just kind of pulled that last wrap and made sure that it was 
laying right against the end of that eye. I always want my collar to come up. A lot of people will dub around the eyes. I just, I used to do it a lot um, and then realized it was, it was one step I could just take out of there um, and the flies would, would look just as good without dubbing around the eyes. So you kind of do that figure eight to finally tie, lock everything down. And then I'm going to whip finish the top of the fly. And just get a couple turns in there. And then I'm going to use this Loon UV clear fly finish and just hit that, that space above the eyes there which will help kind of lock everything down too. So this is a fly, you know, a lot of people like these um, fluorescent blues, particularly in the winter time. Um, to me, it's got just the right amount of flash in it. Um, it's a pretty big fly and it's, and it's pretty heavy, so it's, it's a fly that I like to fish on some of our local rivers here because um, with a good sink tip it'll get down into the zone quickly. Um, so this is a kind of a new winter steelhead pattern that I just started doing, um, tied with some of our new materials here at the shop, a new, new brush from, from Fair Flies, the ice wing fiber, this cool color of brass eye from Aqua Flies. And I think I'm going to go catch fish on this fly this weekend. Thank you for tuning in.